Welcome to the Great On Purpose Podcast. My name is Alfonso Alexander and I am your host. In each episode of this podcast, you will have the opportunity to get to meet leaders from various backgrounds, various industries who are really just cool people doing great things on purpose. They are pursuing their purpose and pursuing greatness and walking in lockstep as they do it. You'll understand what we mean more about that as you get into the podcast. Our goal here is to help you understand that being great is not just something that happens. It is something that has to be done on purpose and in alignment with your purpose. Therefore, this is the great on purpose podcast. Enjoy. Today's episode, Embracing Adversity from Homeless to Leadership, features Demetrius Short. Demetrius would not let the dark and discouraging days he faced as a college student stop him from reaching success. Instead, he chose to use his struggle as a platform to ignite purpose, inspire success, and transform the lives of collegiate students and positively impact youth living in underserved communities. Demetrius is the CEO and founder of Transformation Life Center, a nonprofit 501c3 organization based in Nashville, Tennessee. Take a listen. Hello and welcome to the Great On Purpose podcast. Today, you will have an opportunity to hear from a great person who is doing great things as he continues on his journey toward greatness on purpose. I want you to welcome with me Demetrius Short. Demetrius is a phenomenal gentleman that you will see from this conversation is really walking in his journey toward greatness and is doing that in alignment with his purpose. Demetrius, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us today. Well, we're super excited about being here. Truly thankful for the invitation and this conversation that we hope will not only uh, develop those who are listening, but develop me also. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you for already having a purpose in mind with this conversation, man, because that's what we're, we're all about is aligning that purpose with the greatness that we're trying to pursue. So Demetrius, you're already doing some great things. Why don't you just let folks know what I know about you already and share with us who you are and some of the things that you have going on right now. Yeah, my name is Demetrius Short. I'm originally from Cincinnati, Ohio, matriculated to Nashville in 1992 to attend the great Fisk University uh, and obtained my double major in computer science and business, was the first of my family to uh, graduate from college. Um, and I currently work as a senior software test analyst with Cigna over uh, 25 years in IT and healthcare. Um, and we just came off um, on the personal side of myself being a CEO of Transformation Life Center, a nonprofit here in Nashville, just celebrated 11 years. And we just successfully completed our uh, 11th annual Steps of Success 5K. You'll hear more about um that endeavor but in the midst of a pandemic we actually uh had our greatest year sixty thousand dollars um from this annual fundraiser where i run in the suit and sneakers to help ignite inspire and transform the lives of college students and youth living in underserved communities so we're we're riding, riding that wave uh, we just received our largest donation single donation from fifth third bank strengthening our community fund thirty thousand dollars for our black men run brown boys read initiative to implement a financial literacy piece um and one of the most exciting things that's happening right now is that we're getting ready to get in front of some of nashville's best and brightest minds in our pathway to success initiative leadership academy where my true passion and heart is to help cultivate tomorrow's leaders today in the african-american community i'm also a dad that's a little nervous about my 17 year old princess my one and only daughter getting ready to graduate for college so i'm doing college tours right now and i have a beautiful 22 year old 22 year marriage with my wife and she's currently in school so i'm a spouse that's helping her write papers to get her master's degree in educational psychology so pretty exciting and rewarding times here in the short household excellent excellent man well thank you for sharing that and and you know i want people to understand that there's a level of greatness that can be achieved by serving. And that's what I see when I think about you and what you're doing with Transformation Life Center and all of the things that you guys are doing and the people that you're touching 
you guys are doing some great things. And so really want to talk about that as, over the course of, of our conversation. And Demetrius, you know, one of the things that I always emphasize to anybody that's listening and, and, and anybody that I engage with is there's a lot of power in terms of helping to achieve your purpose and helping to reach a level of greatness that comes with connection. I think God puts people in your lives that can help in our lives that can help us connect so that we can move further and further along our journey. And so, you know, one of those things is, is because of that, I always ask people just to give us some context to share how we know each other. So why don't you tell everybody how you and I know each other? Oh, well, I know it and I rehearse it in my mind every day and I thank God for it. 2019, uh, preparing for our 10th year uh, for our nonprofit organization. Again, I'm an, I'm an organic CEO, never run a nonprofit before. And here we are about to embark on our 10th year um, of success in the Nashville community and transforming lives. And I was fortunate enough to reach to, to, to be uh, a recipient of the Power Moves Award in 2019. And lo and behold, um, this guy named Alfonso Alexander, God divinely placed him behind the table we were sitting at. And after my acceptance speech, I remember walking back to my seat and um, just getting comfortable in the seat. And this, this, I get this tap on my shoulder and the guy says, um, hey man, we need, we need to connect. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are two years later and it was a connection, a divine connection for me uh, as I needed someone, a mentor, a personal individual who could help pull out and guide uh, the best side of me uh, as I was going into this decade of service and how to align me for my purpose. So I inherited a coach, uh, a mentor, a friend, a workout buddy, even got him to run in a suit with me. Um, I met Alfonso at that, that great event. If it wasn't for that event, I wouldn't be here today. So for the last you know two years, uh, Alfonso has been a mentor, a coach, and personal friend of mine. Yeah, that's great, man. And, and we both have benefited from that relationship. So I appreciate your friendship. Uh, you, you mentioned running in a suit. Uh, talk about talk about that and, and your program a little bit so people understand what the Steps of Success program is. Or not yeah, I started the program, but the event, excuse me. The event, yeah. Um, I started wearing suits in fifth grade. My dad was a uh, executive at UPS. And of course he was my biggest role model, biggest hero in the house. I never had to look outside the home um, to, to see a hero and to see his success. So I started wearing suits in fifth grade. And of course, mom and dad and everyone says, it's just a fade, but I uh, get into high school. I'm a star quarterback athlete. I'm wearing suits Friday night before the game, balling my suit up, putting it in, putting it in the locker room after the game, putting it back on and going, this guy's got an old soul, but I, little did I know that that suit would become uh, my brand for success and to to be a staple for us helping uh, individuals and particularly youth in underserved communities um, never look at where they are but aspire to be successful. So I started wearing that suit, uh, got to college, uh, and the suit continued. Suit, sneak, suits, and alligator skin shoes, a briefcase. But at that time, I was going through one of the dark, darkest days of my life. Didn't get a scholarship to go to Fisk and I had to pay for uh, school and I ended up, you know, sleeping on the floor and really not too many people know the story, but I was almost homeless. Um, held it back from my parents, the shame of being the pride of Cincinnati and just having to pull myself through and just take steps each and every day to know that you have something in your gut that you want to become, but putting in the work every day. So I would walk from Fisk University all the way up to my internships on Murphy Road with Caterpillar and HCA. Um, and lo and behold, when I measured it, it was actually 3.1 miles. So I was walking a 5K back in the early 90s as a struggling college student. And here I am today, I vowed being a successful uh, IT uh, software uh, test uh, engineer. I vowed to take my journey and my struggle. How can I take that moment and make it a positive and use this platform? And I created the Steps of Success 5K where I vowed to run a 3.1 mile in a suit and sneakers every year to help ignite, inspire, and transform lives and use that money to help our leadership academy to build future leaders and help uh, pay for college scholarships for students so that they will not, will be able to overcome that financial barrier to success. 
Um, so that suit has become the brand. I didn't know then, but I knew now. But uh, all I know is that I took a step and every step that I took was a step towards my success. And that's what the Lord gave me to name it. Um, every step we take um, is a step towards success. Don't worry about the 10th step. If you never take the next step, that's the most instrumental one that you need to look at to get towards your goals. So let me make sure everybody understands this. So you, <laughs> you walked as an intern mm -hmm. from your college to your internship and back every day. So you'd go to class that morning, mm -hmm. that afternoon, you'd walk to your internship work and then walk back. And yes, that ended up being 3.1 miles. Every day in the early nineties, I wasn't a runner then. I, I had nothing about, knew nothing about running, but it was right. the process. And I, sure. every day, rain, did, snow, sleet, and hail. Did that in a suit every day. And that's, that, that's how you, part of how you made it through college. Yes, sir. And then now you've taken that experience, created an event where people actually participate in a 5K and that's a fundraiser. Yes, sir. For other students that that maybe uh, had a similar situation as yours, but still a 5K is the distance, right? Yes, sir, that is. Okay, and you run that 5K in a suit now? I vowed in 2010 that to the day I die and God gives me the ability, I will use my struggle as a platform to show that if you just be determined, you persevere, and know that it's not about you, but there's other runners out there who can inspire you and just look at you and give you a word. Uh, and and here for the 11th year, I've run 3.1 miles, running it in 22 minutes flat in a full suit and sneakers. And now we have other CEOs who are flying in from all over the country to join this movement to say, you know what? I want to help youth get across that finish line, not just only in the race, but also in life. And I'm happy to do it. Yeah, yeah, and you even got me to run it. I got my in a suit. <laughs> I got the pictures to prove it. Yes, sir. And, and uh, I was all gung ho the next year, uh, but COVID, so it had to go virtual. And I ran it then. I ran it then, but mm -hmm. I didn't wear a suit. <laughs> I, I've only run it in the suit the one time that you and I were able to do it together. Uh, and then this year, I had to do it virtual as well because of schedule conflict. Um, but uh, I enjoy it. It's, it's, you know, I, I'm not a runner, but I use running sometimes as part of my fitness routine. And I really, I have to say running that one in the suit, uh, was my favorite of all of the five K's that I've run thus far. And I probably run 50 or so, um, you know, over the course of my, my, uh, me doing this. And it was, it was awesome, not only because of the meaning behind it, which is your story, which is phenomenal. But then also because what you do at the end of the race for college students, talk about that a little bit. And at the end of the race uh, on the spot, we invite uh, two, 300, sometimes 400 college students. Each university gets 50 free tickets. We invest 50 tickets to get students off the campus, get them into this event where they can see individuals like Mr. Alexander and and uh, just other successful people who they can say, we're not alone. And to get away from the books and just focus on their, their physical, their health. Uh, we know the books and the tests are gonna be there, but for a couple hours, come out to the park. And after the race, the college students' bibs go into a separate drawing and no essay, no tell me your time, no write five pages. We reward uh, and pull thousand dollar scholarships and reward them on the spot to college students just for simply not quitting and just getting across that line to success and the tears and the the calls to mom it just reaffirms that i'm doing exactly what i'm called to do uh in life and so it's been an amazing thing we got sixty thousand dollars this year our biggest year so we're going to be giving away a lot of money here in a couple of weeks uh to, to deserving college students who finished that race uh three weeks ago yeah yeah that's awesome man um I, I I tell you, man, I was intrigued when they were telling your story at that awards event and they were talking about uh, either they or you, but someone talked about 5Ks and scholarships and scholarships given out on the spot. So that's what, what intrigued me to tap you on the shoulder to say, hey, look, man, you're here winning an award. I'm here winning an award. We don't know each other. 
let's get to know each other and make sure that we can can engage on this. And uh, I'm glad that we did. Yes. Uh, so let's talk about you a little bit more. So you, you've shown an incredible amount of grit by walking for your internship, that desire, that hunger to continue and move forward positively in your career. But then also you've shown a level of, of compassion and a heart for giving. And so you started a nonprofit to be able to channel that through. You lead a team of individuals working with you in your nonprofit. And I'm just wondering, you know, what would you attribute to your success as a leader as you lead this organization? The biggest thing is just welcoming adversity. And that may behoove some people like, you no, know, I'm running from adversity, but to just welcome it. If I didn't welcome that, I wouldn't be the CEO that I am today and have this team. But every day I walked, I got up, it was painful, um, but I welcome adversity because it is not running away from situations that challenged me, that actually stretched me and stretched me beyond what I thought I was capable of doing. Um, and so I should be my great level of success is just saying, you know what? I can't run from it. Trouble's gonna come trouble's gonna gonna go um, but at the end of the day if we welcome the adversity we'll find out that we'll be better in the end we always use the analogy that a bow people are are uh, upset that they're not going far in life but they're not going far in life because they're not willing to be stretched mm -hmm. and the further that the bow is pulled and, the, and and you know it takes it takes Turk it takes it takes strength to pull but when it's released, the further the arrow will go. So for me, I welcome the opportunity to be stretched, to be made uncomfortable. Um, and that's been a big attribute to my leadership is that, no, I don't want it. I'm not getting up every day saying, Lord, put me in a, in a trouble. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not so super spiritual that, that I'm saying that. But I just to welcome it knows that if I wake up and it is there, that I have the ability, I have the strength, and I have the potential to overcome anything. And that's what my team relies on for a resilient leader, um, because then they, it, it resonates with them, that they know that when we got hit with the pandemic and we've never done a virtual race, and the first thing in the board meeting was, well, we've never did a virtual race, but you know what my response was? Well, we gonna do it this year, we're gonna find out. And if we did not vote to do it, and if I didn't push through, Man, we wouldn't have had 790 medals uh, to go all over the world. And last year we did 50,000. Um, and now we have this great uh, new virtual platform that none of us were prepared for. But I'm, I just welcomed it and didn't run from it and said, you know what? My team relies on the biggest attribute of me saying, you know what, Demetrius is not afraid of adversity because through it and on the other side of it, you're going to find out you're a better version of yourself than you were before it. Yeah, yeah. Awesome, awesome. So let's talk about adversity a little bit uh, because you welcome it and, uh, and you can grow from it significantly as you articulated just now. So when you think about over your career in life, what is the biggest obstacle that you had to overcome and how'd you do it? How'd you overcome it? For me, it's just shame and pride. You know, when you live with expectations, you know, I'm a, I'm a pastor's kid. I couldn't cuss and I couldn't get in trouble. I couldn't, <laughs> do, I couldn't do anything growing up from kindergarten. I, I had to be perfect from the womb. <laughs> you yeah. know, when all that pressure causes uh, an individual like myself um, to not want to ask for help. Um, mm. And I constantly look at, you know, <laughs> don't want to make this a preaching thing, but I, I'm a spiritual guy. If, if Christ needed 12 men and they turned the world upside down, who am I, you know, to sit here and think that that this world is all about me? So I had to learn to, number one, admit where my shortcomings were, which was hard, again, with a guy from expectations and people who come to you for solutions. Well, Demetrius will do it. Demetrius will get it. I had to learn to say, no, nope, I'm not the solution guy and tell them I may not have it, but I know someone else who can. Mm -hmm. And so I had to learn, Demetrius, don't be the go-to guy. Don't be the solution guy because you don't have all of the solutions. That let a lot of anxiety come off of me. And it, 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 it opened me up as a leader to say, hey, if I would have met you, you know, 10, 15 years ago, I probably wouldn't have taken you up because of my, the shame, you know, of asking for help. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but man, I've learned to surround myself in every area of my life that I'm weak in with individuals who are strong in that. And that doesn't make me a weak person. That makes me a smart person because now I'm equipped uh, as a Swiss army knife with all the tools to be able to overcome uh, adversity that comes my way because it doesn't come through me. It comes through my network and my resource that's that's cheering on uh, me to be successful. So I'm surrounded by some pretty great uh, men and women in my life to make me successful. So I'm humbled myself uh, and humility to say, I don't know everything. Tell people, nope, I don't know the answer. The great Demetrius, you don't know? No, I do not know. And feel great about that. <laughs> so yeah. I free myself to be able to help others. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, we don't have all the answers and that's why we need to have a network of people to help us get through uh, as we move forward. Demetrius, you know, if you if you had the opportunity to give some advice that you would say, this is some of the best leadership or success or growth advice that I could give somebody listening right now based on your own experiences, what would that be? And right off the gate is, is don't let your history define your destiny. Um, don't let your history, and we have computers, again, in computers, we, you have your history, they, they like to save things in your in your Google or, 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 or your phone, you can save things, and, and that's a good thing, right, because we can rehearse and go back to yesterday's things, but so many times, many of us, we live um, uh, a forward-thinking life by what we've done in the past, and so I always say, don't encourage people, don't let your history define your destiny. Whether it's good history or bad history, don't miss out on the beautiful blessings in your future with a rear view mirror perspective. Mm. And when I look at the car industry, everything in the car functions, you got rear view mirrors, you got side mirrors, and they all serve a purpose. I'm glad for some rear view mirrors. So, But what they do, their function is to show you where you've already come. That's their purpose, to show you where you have already come. Dad mm-hmm. left me. Take a peek back. Yes, he did. But they give you and they invest more money in a big front window that's showing you your future. And because they invested in that big window and gave you just a little side view, because what? They want you to glance. You can learn from past, but you can't. Who's going to drive to California through the rear view mir- mirrors? You're going to kill somebody or kill yourself and you'll never ride there. But car manufacturers love you so much and where you're going so much that they invested in a window for you to focus forward. And every now and then take a glimpse at your past, but don't let that past stop you because why? They believe that they want you to arrive at your destination. So forget about the, the past. You have to ask yourself your why each and every day. Number two, why am I doing this? every day what is on the line for me and that means that if i don't become the person that alfonso believes i can come there's two impacts there's an impact on me but also the others who are aligned to my success and you have to ask yourself if i don't become or if i don't do or if i don't accomplish how empty will my life be without that thing also how are your children's life going to be impacted? How is your generation? How are those students at Fisk University and the community going to be impacted? So you ask your why, and then you set the foresight that if I fail, what impact does it make? If I'm successful, what impact does it make? And then you then have to decide on yourself, I want to live in the areas of impact and go from there. So ask your why, feel it with passion, and don't let uh, your future, your history define your destination. I love it. I love it, man. I thank you so much, uh, particularly um, people understanding their why, because your why is part of this purpose and the whole scope of that. If you want to achieve greatness, you have to make sure that you start from ground one, and that is understanding what your purpose is. And then everything else you align and strategically make sure that you manage your situations to the best of your ability so that you can be working toward achieving that purpose. And that becomes part of your why. Mm -hmm. You know, if if my why is to 
create opportunities for other people in my family or other people who are friends of mine like you. If that is my why, then I understand how that fits within my purpose because they're connected, they're aligned. And as I pursue greatness on purpose, mm -hmm. then that's what I'm doing is I am walking in that purpose and great things will happen. Great things will come my way as I chase my purpose, not chasing money, not chasing fame, any of that. If I chase my purpose, then those other things will come. And that's really where we got to go. Demetrius, if you had one last thing that you want to share with the listeners, uh, just to kind of give some encouragement or some thoughts on them pursuing purpose and achieving greatness as they pursue that purpose, what would that be? And for me, it's a, it's a saying that I, a quote I created, you know, obstacles are just speed bumps. And I've never seen a speed bump stop a car. It temporarily delays it, but the car has the potential to get over the bump. Why are you letting an obstacle stop you? The next time you go to a store, next time you go through a, uh, a no speeding zone, look, look at that ops, look at that speed bump. It's, they're not telling you to stop. It's just an obstacle. So I want to challenge everyone to not let obstacles stop you from, from your success. It just temporarily, temporarily delays you. And we don't like delay. We want everything microwave in now, but you need the process. Enjoy the process, enjoy the ride and always know. And so the next speed bump you, you go over, you're gonna think about this podcast and say, yep, that crazy guy running the suit. He told me <laughs> that my life is symbolic of what I'm getting ready to do. I'm gonna still continue to go forward, but this is just a temporary delay. And I believe in you, Alfonso believes in you to be successful and the world needs you to overcome obstacles because greatness is inside of you. Man, thank you so much. I love that. Obstacles are just speed bumps and speed bumps don't stop cars. They do slow you down. That's it. And sometimes that's necessary. Sometimes we are going so quickly that we may not have the full thought that we need to be able to execute. So we need these little bumps to slow us down a little bit to make sure that we have the intellectual component a, a part of what we're trying to do so that we can move forward successfully, man. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Ladies and gentlemen, you have just been involved in a conversation between two friends, Demetrius Short and myself, yeah. Alfonso Alexander. We are talking about how you can be great on purpose here on the Great On Purpose podcast. Demetrius, thank you so much for joining us, man. This has been great for me, for us to have this conversation. I really appreciate you and all of the wisdom that you shared. I appreciate your passion and your heart for giving back and helping others to achieve greatness on purpose. So thank you for being with us today. Thank you guys for joining us. Have a great one, Demetrius. We'll talk soon. Sounds good. Thank you, sir. All right, take care. Thank you for tuning in to the Great On Purpose podcast. I am Alfonso Alexander. Please be sure to follow me on Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook so that you can continue to hear stories and get information that can help inspire you to be great on purpose.